And they were lying. They knew they were lying. Well, there's an additional danger that I, I really, in this visit to Washington, I wanted to convey to the people I've talked to, which is the following. I believe that the traditional enemies of the United States and of the Western Hemisphere are eager to go against the United States now that supposedly is, quote unquote, weak because of the economic crisis. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, just waiting for the economic crisis to continue to develop because many people, myself included, think that it's only the beginning of what we've seen now. So they think there's going to be uh, a major banking and financial crisis and that there's going to be a depression afterward and that the United States will not have the same capabilities to defend itself. Well, uh, two things uh, I think are, are happening right now in my opinion um, that will contribute to that outcome because it, it is not something that is simply happening, I don't believe. Um, I think it's pretty clear that in various ways it is something that is being encouraged to happen. Um, and um, I would make that argument with respect to the period before G.W. Bush left office. I would certainly make it now. Uh, the approach that is being taken to our so-called crisis is exactly the opposite of what, in the course of our history, is the proven approach for getting out of these difficulties. Because the proven approach is a simple one. When you find yourself in a position where there is not sufficient money uh, circulating in the system, it's like anemia, uh, what you do is you make sure that more money is flowing through the body, right? Mm -hmm. and, and what that requires is essentially that you cut taxes in some way or another. You get out of the way. Uh, now that requires that you remember what a lot of people in our country now forget. And that is that money does not start out in pools. In point of fact, it starts out distributed pretty much according to who is producing the goods and services that make your economy go. Mm -hmm. The question is, how much pooling are you going to do? especially pooling that uses the government mechanism, but also pooling that uses the mechanism of the central banking system. Uh, when you're in a difficulty like this, you want to cut back on that pooling so that more money is available to the individual decision makers at every point in your economy. That essentially means that you have literally uh, millions of people and hundreds of thousands of businesses who's, who are looking at their environment and making every effort to maximize the result they get from each dollar, right? There is no way that a government bureaucracy, especially one driven by politicians, can equal that when it comes to improving the efficient and effective flow of capital in its productive uses, right, throughout your economy. So what's the opposite of, of that approach? The opposite of that approach is what they're doing. You pass laws that will concentrate more and more of the money and more and more of the say over that money in the hands of the centralized bureaucracy under the guidance or dictation of politicians, right? Um, who these days, in the model we're now looking at, are in cooperation with the central controllers of the bank. Uh, and the end result is disaster. Because obviously what you're essentially doing it's like, instead of having the blood flowing through the body so it can nourish the different parts that are growing weak, right? Where cells are dying because they're not being properly nourished. That's not gonna happen. You're going to be pooling that, and you're going to pool it according to political dictates. And the parts that will get the money will be, will be like clots where blood is building up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and if it builds up in the right places, the heart, the brain, you're killing the patient. Uh, and I would argue that given you know, things that stretch all the way back in some intellectual form to, uh, to and before people like Schumpeter and that have their counterpart in uh, sort of uh, Leninist philosophy and all of this, worse is better. Right? From the point of view of consolidating control, worse is better. Uh, and between you and me, I add to that equation the fact that we have um, uh, now, um, let somebody occupy the White House, 
who, when you look at his background and his associates, he actually has connections with people who could precipitate crisis in this country more directly. Mm -hmm. I don't know why people are sleeping at night better in this country with the knowledge that Barack Obama has indirect communications with the worst terrorists on the face of the earth. Right? In a positive kind of way, he either has background associates, including Frank Davis at one point, Eric Lee, who have ties that would allow them to light up that communication. What does that mean? Because I don't like the idea of the president bargaining quietly with terrorists and then telling me that we're going to face a day of reckoning. Right? I thought that phrase in his speech was both inappropriate for the president and ominous. Because a day of reckoning, it's not like a rendezvous with destiny or these nice phrases that were used in the past. A day of reckoning usually implies your punishment is coming. Sure. And I'm going to deliver it. Right? You declare it a war against it. Yeah. Um, and and uh, so I, I guess I look at what's, what's happening and I. I think to myself, yeah, things are going to get worse, but they're being encouraged to get worse. Uh, just as in a common sense sort of way, if you find yourself over your head in debt, right, you don't go out and borrow several times as much as you would ordinarily borrow, right? Why would you do that? By what rationale are you going to solve your debt problem? By actually committing yourself to a spending frenzy, which is going to be financed with more debt that you know you cannot possibly pay. Mm -hmm. uh, why is this happening? And, and that also raises a question about what you're doing to your credit system. Because ordinarily speaking, when you're in a situation like this, you want to make sure that more liquidity will be available for productive economic uses, right? Um, and generally, we all understand that the government's use of money is not the most productive and economic use. So at that point, if you send the government into the capital market, and it's sucking up that capital, it's like taking oxygen out of the air of a room. The government's going to breathe, but the other people in that room are going to start falling over dead. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think everybody sees this. By the stock market, folks. People look at the stock market today and say, you know, there's not going to be a company alive in this landscape except mm -hmm. one that's breathing off the government's oxygen. Mm -hmm. Now, people, the traditional enemies of the United States, inside of, uh, I'm referring mainly outside, they are seeing an opportunity to go against the United States. And me being a Venezuelan and living in Venezuela and, and traveling throughout South America, I believe it's my duty to convey the um, warning that the worst thing you can have, the worst scenario, is to have an outside, let's say, political attack against the United States and having very close to the south and southern flank 14 governments related to the Sao Paulo Forum. Because then, that, that territory can be used. For example, uh, Chavez is making all his friends sign agreements with uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the president of Iran. He has traveled not only to Venezuela, but to Ecuador, Bolivia, and Nicaragua to sign commercial, quote unquote, agreements. And there is a direct flight from Tehran to Caracas, Venezuela, and then to Managua full of supposedly uh, people involved in commercial agreements, but I, I believe that uh, a percentage of those are uh, Islamic uh, fundamentalists who are getting into American, South American territory very close to the United States and can be a threat. From the standpoint uh, of Chavez, the point of view of Chavez, what he wants to do he wants to repeat the successful experience that Fidel Castro had for the United States in the missile crisis. It, it worked for, for Castro. And Castro is, uh, Chavez is a pupil, a student of Fidel Castro, so 